There are two piston pin retainers used to secure the wrist pin to the piston. The wrist pin attaches the connecting rod to the piston. The wrist pin is free to move slightly side to side and rotate within its mounting. The pin retainers attach to either side of the piston and trap the pin so it can't contact the cylinder. The piston pin retainer isn't a part that needs to be serviced individually. However, it is a part that needs to be replaced whenever it is removed. The retainer is a sprung ring. When it is removed, it becomes slightly compressed. If reinstalled, it will not fit tightly and can come loose. If the retaining ring comes loose, it will quickly cause severe engine damage when the piston strikes it. Replacing a piston pin retainer is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. Hi, I'm Mark Socha. Do-it-yourself repairs like these are easier than you might think. From lawn machines to cordless grills, kitchen mixers, outdoor grills, our how-to videos walk you through each repair from start to finish. So doing it yourself means never having to do it alone. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing the side cover, the chain, and the bar. Now remove the top cover. It's held in place with three screws. Now remove the starter assembly. Now remove the top handle. Now remove the clutch drum. Next I'll remove the clutch. There's a number of ways you can do this. You can just use a pair of adjustable pliers. If you do that, it's a good idea to put a rag over the clutch so you don't damage it with the pliers. And also you'll need to bind the piston so the crankshaft can't spin. To do that, you'll remove the spark plug and then insert a short length of starter rope into the cylinder and that'll bind the piston between the rope and the top of the cylinder. The better method is to use a clutch removal tool. There's a couple of pins that line up with tabs on the clutch. You place the tool over the shaft and then place a socket onto the tool and use a ratchet wrench to remove it. Again, you'll need to bind the cylinder if you use this or I think the better way is to use an impact wrench if you have one. With the impact wrench, the compression inside the cylinder will be great enough that you don't need to bind up the piston. Just simply the compression will keep the engine from turning over. Next I'll remove the brake assembly. There's a spring inside the brake that is under tension when the brake is released. So to safely remove this you need to make sure that the brake is locked and now I can remove the side cover. Now I can remove the oil pump assembly. It's held in place with two screws. and I'll remove the oil pump gear. Now I'll remove the carburetor. I'll pull the trigger so I can access the end of the linkage and pull it away from the trigger. Now I need to pull the wires away from the cylinder. They're held in place with this wire clip. And I'll go ahead and remove that. And then I can pull away the wires.
Now remove the flywheel. Again, I'm going to use an impact to remove the flywheel nut, but if you don't have an impact, you can use a ratchet wrench. You will just need to bind the cylinder so that the crankshaft can't spin. If the flywheel is stuck on the taper, what you'll want to do is thread the nut back onto the shaft. Not all the way though, you don't want it, you don't want any threads extending out past the nut. Then I'll use a socket on the nut. I'll strike the socket with a hammer and the flywheel should pop free. There we go. Remove the nut and the flywheel comes free. Now remove the remaining cylinder assembly from the saw. The top half of the cylinder is connected to the crankcase with the same screws that hold the engine to the base. So remove those screws. should be able to pull the cylinder away from the piston. Now I'll remove the wrist pin retainer. Just using a small pick to get it started. And then I'm gonna kinda keep a finger over it as it comes free. These tend to wanna fly across the room on you. Now I'll snap my new retaining ring in place. Again, you never wanna reuse these as they will tend to lose some of their springiness as they're removed from the piston and they won't seat securely. So I'm just slightly compressing the spring and sliding it back in. Then I'll, again, I'll use a pick to make sure it's seated down in the groove inside the piston. And that looks good. The joint between the cylinder and the crank case is sealed with some liquid gasket. So before we reassemble this, I need to clean off all the old liquid gasket to get ready for the new. I'll use a razor blade to carefully scrape the gasket material away. Now I'll install a bead of liquid gasket around all of the sealing surfaces on the crank case and the cylinder. This is a case where less is usually better. On the cylinder side, I need just a small bead up against these shoulders for the bearings. Now I can install the new piston assembly. Before I slide it into the cylinder, I'll again add a little bit of oil to it so it's not dry when the saw is started. Now I can slide the piston into the cylinder. Before I do, I want to make sure that I have the porting on the piston pointed towards the carburetor. I'll line up the piston ring with the end gap pin and then insert the piston into the cylinder. As I bring the assembly down, I'll seat the bearings into the liquid gasket. And now I can replace the crankcase. And this will get snugged up when we install the engine back into the frame. Now we can begin reassembling the saw. This is one of the clips that secure the top cover. If this clip on the front of the saw has fallen out, you'll want to make sure you reinstall it now, as you won't have another chance. Now I'll place the engine back into the frame. Just want to be careful that the crankcase doesn't come free from the cylinder as I do this. Now it's in place, I can resecure it with the bolts. I'll get each of the bolts started. Now I'll just work my way around the engine, slowly bringing the two halves of the engine back together, the cylinder and the crankcase. Now I don't have an exact torque spec for these bolts. What I want to accomplish is just making a good seal with that liquid gasket. So they don't need to be super tight. Basically just hand tight with the screwdriver is all it'll take. And that ought to do it. Now I'll reinstall the flywheel. Make sure I line up the key with the groove in the shaft.
Because the way the engine is mounted to the frame, there's quite a bit of play, and that can change the gap between the ignition coil and the flywheel, which it has. As you can see, the flywheel is now rubbing against the ignition coil. So I need to reset that gap. To do that, I'll just loosen the screws on the ignition coil, pull the coil away from the flywheel. I'm actually going to move the magnets away from the coil temporarily. Now I'm going to use a gap gauge to set the proper gap. It should be 14 thousandths of an inch. If you don't have one of these, usually a good heavy business card will be about the same. So I'll bring the magnet back around. Now the gapping tool is stuck between the ignition coil and the magnet on the flywheel, and I'll tighten the screws back down. and remove the gapping tool. Now I'll reinstall the oil pump gear. I'll get it started on the shaft, and then it's just a matter of using a screwdriver to slowly push it onto the shaft as the spring expands open. Now I just want to work it onto the shaft until it's centered in the flat portion of the shaft. About like that. Now install the oil pump. Now I can reinstall the chain brake assembly. I'll line it up with the housings, and then you might need to just slightly move the brake lever to get the clutch to line up, just like that. And now I can secure it with the screws. Now the clutch and the clutch drum. need to release the brake to get the clutch drum in place. Next comes the carburetor. slide the linkage back into place. Then I'll go ahead and install the choke lever. Another of my top cover clips fell off over here, so I'll reinstall this now. This will be my last chance to install this clip. Next is the air filter base. Now I'll tuck the wires out of the way and secure them with the clip. Now I'll reinstall the top handle. And I'll place the spark plug boot back onto the spark plug. Now the starter assembly.
Now I'll reinstall the air filter. The air filter cover. And the top cover. Now replace the chain guard. Yours may or may not have fallen off. And the bar and chain. Be sure to check back often for new videos and expert advice. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment.